Let us all stand for the reading of God's word. We're going to read from the gospel according to St. John chapter 20. From verse 19 to verse 23. This is after the crucifixion, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. When he comes and meets his disciples, his apostles. As they gathered there with the doors being shut. Jesus comes and stands in the midst of them. And he speaks to them. And then he blesses them with the Holy Spirit. So let us read John chapter 20 verse 19 to verse 23 all together. Giving reverence and honor to God. Standing up in the house of God in the presence of God from verse 19. Then the same day at evening being the first day of the week. When the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them peace be with you when he had said this he showed them his hands and his side then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord so Jesus said to them again peace be to you as the father has sent me I also send you and when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the Holy Spirit if you forgive the sins of any they have forgiven them if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Thank you. you. May be seated. Why don't we clap hands and praise God as we look at the word of God and thank God for his word, for believing it. We accept and we want to see this happen in our life. Here we see that Jesus is able to now come and fulfill the first step of the three steps of the promises and the wonderful blessings of God that the Bible reveals to us first is the indwelling of the Spirit of God we've been seeing how God is a spirit and we who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth each and every one of you are a spirit and you need to know how to move in the spirit and receive the Spirit of God it is by the new birth being born again accepting Jesus Christ as the only Lord God and Savior of your life surrendering yourself completely to him and inviting him though the disciples accepted Jesus as the Messiah because Jesus was not yet crucified he had not paid the price he had not finished the sacrifice therefore the Holy Spirit could not enter them because of their sins therefore when Jesus rose again having finished the walk on the cross he is now able to come and breathe on them and tell them receive the Holy Spirit this is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit this is the indwelling where the Holy Spirit of God is now able to come and dwell in the bodies in the lives of those who accept Jesus Christ Jesus says to them I also send you and for them to be sent he knows that they first need to receive the Holy Spirit inside so that God will dwell inside of them Jesus himself told them in John chapter 14 verse 16 and 17 and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him that's why the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because they do not acknowledge God nor do they know him but to his disciples who know God and he says but to you who know him for he dwells with you and will be in you the Spirit of God leads you from all around besides you going ahead of you but now because of the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the finished work on the cross, the very Spirit of God which could not dwell and was, had to be removed because of the sin of man. Now he comes and he dwells in. Romans 8.10 says, But you are not in the flesh but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. This is the first step. Having the Spirit of God dwelling inside of you. 
in your walk towards heaven in your walk towards an eternity with Jesus Christ for it is the same spirit that works inside of you but this is not the end many would think that this is enough this is over there is nothing more but Jesus commanded his disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 4 saying as they were assembled together not to depart from Jerusalem the holy city the chosen place of God but to wait for the promise of the father which he said you've already heard from me for John baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now he was clear he's the same God who breathed upon them just around 50 days ago but now he's saying wait for you will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit what is the point of Jesus breathing on them and then baptizing them again because now we will see that God will come upon them for a specific reason and purpose with power the dwelling in of the Holy Spirit God himself dwelling inside is an acknowledgement that you accepted the Lord and you are on your walk with the Lord towards eternity but that is not enough just having the Spirit of God inside of you otherwise Jesus would have not commanded them because breaking a command is sin if there's anyone here I want to let you know if you have not accepted Jesus Christ accept him and if you accepted him and baptized in water now you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit at the earliest immediately without fail you got to wait with hunger with expectation you got to ask of God and he will give the spirit Jesus himself said if you being evil give good gifts to your own children how much more will your father in heaven give to those who ask of him therefore ask God and he will give you to all the 120 who obeyed the voice of Jesus Christ and gathered in the upper room and they waited for 10 days they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit as Jesus told them in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you this is not the indwelling of the Holy Spirit but this is the overshadowing you can see how it happened in Acts chapter 2 that on the day of Pentecost when it had fully come and they were in one place in one accord there were 500 that Jesus met but 380 did not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit I would not be surprised if the 380 are in hell right now they rejected the call of God they rejected the invitation of God they disregarded and discredited Jesus Christ's words saying I command you to not depart they found something else to do people take these things lightly and they think that they can get away with it we've got to remember Jesus is the one who said in Matthew chapter 25 though there were 10 virgins who were dedicated to following the Lord they had the lamps they had the fire they once had the oil but when they were not ready five found themselves locked outside only five made it into the marriage supper of the lamb so do not think that it is for us to decide when God calls I'll accept some other time I'll do this later that other day the next day oh a future day will sometimes never come we know how Esau rejected the call of God for his life and then the Bible says he found no place for repentance though he wept with bitter tears it had passed away from him Esau would be in hell now because he could not get into that point of repentance it is with God that we can repent we cannot do it ourselves repentance and being born again is completely a hundred percent help of the Holy Spirit without God we cannot become the children of God ourselves man cannot find a way to God that is why God came from heaven down to earth he is the only way without him no one can go to the father for there is no other name except the name of Jesus Christ by which men might be saved that is how you receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit but that is not enough he didn't just tell his apostles when he had the last supper and when he had the very first communion 
he didn't call the 70 whom he had sent out to go two by two he had hundreds and thousands of disciples he didn't even invite his own family his brothers or sisters his mother only the chosen apostles were called to the upper room and with them he gave of his body and of his blood and to them he gave the holy communion so that they would give it to the others after he would leave the earth but here this overshadowing this power of the holy spirit is not just for the apostles it is for the entire church it is for each and every one of you because each and every one of you need that supernatural power to live your life that is why he wanted them to that is why he wanted them to be safe in that environment do not depart do not go be together till you receive the power from on high because you do not have the power to be able to withstand the things that the world and the devil might do to you without this power of the holy spirit so till such point stay together in one place and you will receive then you will be witnesses to me after you receive see how important it is it is like a newborn baby who's born you got to keep the baby safe you can't just take the baby anywhere and in all kinds of environments you can't travel at any time you can't do many things you got to keep the baby in a protected fashion and man as they grow as they get stronger and stronger the more you can expose them the more you can send them out more they'll be able to withstand things till then the parents protect the baby and keep the baby safe in a very germ-free environment in an environment where the baby can be nurtured and taken care of in the same way god is telling them now you have the indwelling of the holy spirit but still though i trained you though jesus trained them directly three and a half years 24 hours all through the week wherever they moved they moved with him wherever he lived they lived with him they weren't going back to their home with such training still he commanded them to receive first the holy spirit and then they can go and be witnesses and live a supernatural powerful life as an example but on the day of pentecost the holy spirit was not come to dwell inside of them because he was already dwelling inside of them because jesus already breathed but now he came and sat upon each and every one of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the holy spirit gave them utterance just like how when god's plan for the life of mary had to be fulfilled god sent the angel gabriel and he came with the message saying what will happen to her in luke chapter 1 verse 35 where the angel answered and said to her the holy spirit will come upon you not inside of you but upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you therefore also that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of god you have to move first from the indwelling to the overshadowing where you receive the power of god that is the glory of god just like how those flames of fire came and sat upon each and every one of them you have seen in certain paintings that have been done for last few centuries how when they paint the saints they put a halo a circular ring like a crown it is like that it is god giving you that glory giving that sign that you've now received it is the cloud that came and rested upon the tabernacle in the old testament it is a pillar of fire that stood there between heaven and earth as the children of israel were there in the wilderness leading them through the night it is the glory of god upon those who are baptized in the holy spirit to equip them to give them the power you need that power tell the person sitting next to you you need that power without that power you will not have breakthroughs in your life you will not be able to fulfill the plan of god without the overshadowing and the holy spirit of god coming and resting upon mary she would have not been able to fulfill god's call for her life jesus christ would have not been born 
should have just had to wait and she could have prayed she could have claimed she could have done many things but none of that would have worked it is the very presence of god the glory of god the overshadowing what did you all say indwelling overshadowing but that is not the end the bible reveals to us that god will move in such a way that the very earth will shake there will be an earthquake when the presence of god moves and gives us that next level of power from just being baptized in the holy spirit it says in the book of acts chapter 3 that peter and john in the hour of prayer went to the temple to pray and they found a lame man from his mother's womb who had been carried there and he had not walked but they had placed him at the gate of the temple and looking at peter and john thinking that he might receive something money but they said fixing their eyes upon him look at us and as he gave his attention to them they said silver and gold i do not have but of what i do have i give you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength so he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them walking leaping and praising god when this mighty miracle took place the people gathered there around them looking at this lame man whom they could identify and recognize and it is at this time that they see that god has given them the opportunity to be a witness so when peter saw it he responded to the people saying men of israel why do you marvel at this or why do you look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk the god of abraham isaac and jacob the god of our fathers glorified his servant jesus whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of pilate when he was determined to let him go but you denied the holy one and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the prince of life whom god raised from the dead of which we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know here we see the mark difference the power of god for them to be the apostle was given to them that they looked at him intently and they picked him up and he was able to receive strength in his leg and start walking and leaping and now the man who was outside the temple is now able to walk inside the temple to pray and praise and worship god and he clung to them he held on to them would not let them go away at this time when they are preaching the news goes to the murderers of jesus christ who are there inside the priests and the captains of the temple the sadducees came upon peter and john upon the entire crowd because they were greatly upset and disturbed that they taught the people and preached in jesus the resurrection from the dead and they laid hands on them and put them in custody in prison until the next day they want to let them know that they are in control that they have the power that they can do what they want they caught them and locked them up in prison because it was evening an excuse and so the next day they bring them out and they start asking them questions setting them in front of the council by what power or by what name have you done this at this time again they have the boldness given by the power of the holy spirit being filled with the holy spirit they are able to speak to them and tell the truth that jesus is the messiah they were not upset they were not limited they were not contained by the threatenings though they caught them and threatened them it says in verse 18 they called them and commanded them not to speak at all not teach in the name of jesus but peter and john answered and said to them 
whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God you judge for we cannot but speak the things which he have seen and heard so when they had further threatened them with dire consequences they showed them already that they can put them in prison lock them up and look like no one could deliver them so now they threatened them further and finding no way of keeping them or punishing them further because of that lame man which everyone had seen now being able to walk and the people thousands of them accepting Jesus Christ they let them go so what do they do they come to their own companions it says here in Acts chapter 4 verse 23 and they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them and when they heard that they all raised up their voices and they prayed to God with one accord saying Lord you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them who by the mouth of his your servant David have said why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things the kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ for truly against your holy servant Jesus whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done now Lord look on their threats grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus this is how they prayed this is how they reacted and responded when they were threatened you can see here how when God gives them the power the devil uses his cohorts his servants to come and stop the move of God to come and stop people from going to Jesus Christ to come and stop the preaching of the gospel to come and stop the kingdom of God from going into all the world but they did the right thing they came and they reported all that you can see here in Acts chapter 4 verse 23 it says they went to their own companions they were not on their own trying to tackle this they went to their own do you have your own companions that is a question that the Christians of this world in this present day and age need to be asked because many think they can sit at home and read the Bible and pray if that was the plan of God then Jesus would have not started the church he's the one who started the church because he knew that it was needed here we can see clearly that they went to their own companions either you have your own companions who are the church or you're on your own with no help from anybody you've got to pray with the church that is why last week he prayed and even this morning we're going to pray after this and it has to be done regularly that is why i got to come for every service especially come for the friday morning service and pray with your own because the devil will see that god has now given you his power and his glory to fulfill your life's call just like how the apostles now had the power and they did this miracle they made this lame man walk now they can be the servants of god in israel and from there they can go to the ends of the earth but the devil immediately wanted to shut them down you would have seen that happen in your life when God moves and gives you the power he opens the door and then you step in immediately what you receive suddenly seems to be taken away at that time what are you supposed to do you got to come to your own you got to come to the house of God to the church and you got to share and report about that and you got to pray together and as you pray we'll see what happens go and pray with your own companions is the what the word of God is saying praying with the church is the first step why don't you all shout out and say praying with the church Jesus didn't tell them at any time you can just stay by yourself I'll come and I'll meet you individually that was not the plan of God at all the second thing they did is they prayed aloud verse 24 it says they raised their voices to God they didn't just come and pray in a broken fashion and manner because they are threatened 
Because previously we see that they are afraid and they locked the doors and they were inside when Jesus was crucified and died and buried. And Jesus had to come and stand in the midst of them. But now they have that power to raise their voices and they're going to the next level supernaturally, spiritually and raising the voices and praying aloud shows that they have given their strength and they take an effort to do it. The Bible says the effectual fervent, fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. A fiery, zealous prayer, a prayer which shows that you are putting an effort and giving your strength, exerting yourself, that it will touch the heart of God. Because you're not just lightly praying with half-heartedness, just repeating some words. You are putting your all into it. They raise their voices to God. It shows that they were not weak in their prayer, but they were strong. When the enemy comes in, you got to raise your voice. That will break the oppression. That is the very first step. Coming to the church, then praying aloud. Even this morning, do your best to pray as loud as you can. Amen. The third thing that we can see is they prayed with unity. It says when they heard this, verse 24, they raised, they raised their voice to God with one accord. All together. One accord and said. It was not just one person praying. They prayed together. This morning, we'll also start our prayer, praying the same prayer for this nation, for the nations of the world with one voice and one accord. See how marvelous it is. They got together and they all said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. They prayed it together. It was not just one person praying, the others just sitting down. Everyone got together, everyone raised their voices. That is why though one person is praying after the first corporate prayer that you're going to do, you got to join along, you got to say amen, you got to be completely connected to that person as they're praying, you got to listen. That is why I pray point by point so the others will be able to follow. Take one point, if the person finishes one, you go to the second. So the others will be able to follow and they'll be able to look at that. Do not just go here and there and then confuse everybody. Then they'll be wondering what you're praying for. You got to pray together as one body in one accord. First is praying with the church. Second is what do we say? Praying aloud. Third is praying with unity. And the fourth is praying based on the word of God. They quoted the word of God. Acts chapter 4 verse 25 it says, By your mouth of your holy servant David you said, and they're quoting the exact scripture at that time. When we pray on the word, then our prayers will be answered. You got to pray, ask God based on what is written on the Bible. Man likes to have his own religion. He wants to do whatever he wants to do. He wants to have his own customs, his own traditions. It's nice to do certain things. Sit up and stand up and go here and there and do this and that. But if it is not based on the word of God, then... How can we expect God to answer? He has revealed it all, what He will do. We've got to search the scriptures and find a basis for our request. Many people do not know what to ask for. You've got to ask according to what the word says. Then your prayer will not be in vain. Your prayers will be answered when you pray on the word. When people come and ask, pray for this, pray for that. When we realize it is not based on the word, then that prayer is not going to have any effect. But they might put pressure saying, no, no, you got to pray. If you say you don't pray, then they'll get upset with you. But Jesus never went out of the plan of God. He was exactly in the will and plan of God at all times. He would not even go into that village in Samaria because first salvation is of the Jews. Then after, when he saw the door open is when things took place. He even told his disciples, do not go into the villages of Samaria, but go to the lost children of Israel first. The Syrophoenician woman came and cried. He said, I cannot cast the children's bread to the dogs. It is meant for the children. He would not even go and speak to her or 
pray for her but she persisted you got to know that based on god's word is how you got to pray and then your prayers will definitely be answered and all these points that we pray for is based each and every one of them on the word of god but you got to make that up habit and that's how you got to pray the fifth thing is you got to pray for god's plan verse 28 it says to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done god has got a plan for your life he's created with you with a purpose he's got a plan for his church here for us and he's got a purpose for us here we've got to pray that god's plan will be fulfilled then that prayer will be answered many would like to go and do whatever they want and then call somebody and say you come and pray and bless this under pressure maybe someone will go and say okay do something and they'll say okay i fulfill fulfill my religious obligation immediately their compulsions and all their religious pressures they'll feel satisfied oh yes we've done this but is it god's plan first you got to go to god and ask him what your plan is before we start something before we do something what is the purpose let your will be done oh god let your kingdom come whatever you purposed by your hand let it be done that's what they prayed we got to pray for god's plan to be fulfilled then our prayers will be answered that is how you got to pray in your life then you will never fail you'll always have the victory people make their own decisions go here and there do their own things and then they think that they can just pray and bribe god or do something some religious acts and think that it will automatically work it will not work if it is not god's plan why should god step in he's got a plan we've got to be the ones who follow him many will want jesus to follow them they'll say come jesus come here come here do this for me do that for me god is not a bell hop to ring the bell and say you do this i'm going wherever i want you go ahead be my security guard you come and be my assistant no 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 we've got to find god's plan and when we pray according to it then we live according to it then we will have victory at all times it is a lie of the devil that makes man thinks that their plans are better than god's plan that's what devil came and said oh you eat this fruit then you will become like gods and they believe that lie thinking that god has got some bad plan for them they've got some great plan and they join with the devil i want to tell you and remind you once again that god's plans are the best plans for your life you will have joy you will have peace and his prosperity his abundance will not have any added sorrow to it you will be able to enjoy the blessings of god you will be able to sleep peacefully because god will take care of everything for you he does more than what you can do as you're sleeping he will be working you take one step he will do many things for you live for him and he will make things fall in place he will do amazing things in your life they did not just play for the plan of god they prayed for the preaching that is what we need to pray as a church every christian has to pray church is not a social organization to just go and do some good in the society the first primary purpose of the church is to preach the gospel it is a purpose for each and every one of your life to share the good news with the lost many get lost thinking that they can go and do some social work it is good let everyone would do it do it but leaving preaching the gospel aside doing the work of an evangelist and then going and helping the poor giving them money building them a house oh fighting for the cause of this group of people who rejected fighting for the cause of that group of people who rejected all that is good but are they going to go to heaven they might have a great life here or not reynard bonke would say what is the point of me going to the prison to a man who's locked up inside a jail cell and giving him a nice 12 inch mattress telling him i like condition this room telling him i'll give you the best food tell him i'll give you good clothes i'll put a television here i'll give you all the comforts is that what he needs he needs deliverance he needs to be brought out of that prison out of that bondage into freedom people have to be brought out of the clutches of devil darkness and death on their way to hell and be put on their way towards heaven that is the best thing that you can do 
for anybody or not and then after that God himself will build their life God will do amazing things for them we cannot lose this focus as a church the church is lost doing all kinds of things they got their own religion going here and there doing things which all the people and organizations of the world and companies of the world will come and appreciate saying oh wonderful we'll sponsor you we'll do this for you we'll do that for you but you lost the direction and the focus of reaching the lost but here they did not lose that verse 29 says they prayed saying lord look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word that is all you got to get together and pray that with all boldness each and every one of you should pray so that you will be able to preach share the word of god share the good news for without this spiritual boldness the preaching of the word will stop in this nation you got to pray that everyone would know that there is a way that everyone would be able to find their way to jesus christ and the seventh and the final thing is they prayed for power we've got to ask god for power as a church verse 30 it says that by the stretching out your hand to heal that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant jesus they expected signs and wonders to be done the devil wanted to stop signs and wonders as soon as that lame man was healed they came and locked them up they got to say let's not do all this let us quietly go and be secret christians that's a very difficult term for me to understand how you can be a christian and be in secret because jesus didn't say that at all he said you'll receive power and he'll be witnesses to me in all the earth we cannot shut our mouth we can have a personality of being reserved and being just quiet by ourselves but once we become a christian we've got to open our mouths to sing we've got to open our mouths to thank god we've got to open our mouths to praise we've got to open our mouths to share the good news we cannot be silent if you have the power of god dwelling inside of you the holy spirit dwelling inside of you or even the most weak and reserved timid person will explode with the power of god they cannot but contain oh they'll say my cup runneth over god will transform you to be bold as a lion for you're following the line of the tribe of judah they prayed expecting power so you got to pray for power pray on the word why don't you repeat and say from point four pray on the word pray for god's plan pray for gospel preaching and pray for power that when they asked this and they prayed in such an effective manner what happened was 31 says when they had prayed the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the holy spirit and they spoke the word of god with boldness it was really shaken it is not they're just saying in a poetic way that it was just shaken no the word that is used in greek saleo is to agitate to rock to topple or to destroy it destroyed the plan of the devil over that city and over their church and over them because they prayed in such an effective manner the devil came with a yoke trying to oppress them and shut them down and shut them up but they got together and they prayed and the place shook not just physically it rocked and destroyed the spiritual bondage and oppression and the yoke the devil put on the church you got to pray in such a fashion and manner that the yoke of the devil over this nation and over the world would be broken the place violently moved an earthquake took place it says that place shook beneath them causing the building to tremble when they prayed in such a fashion and manner you got to pray in such a fashion and manner and you can see the change the people who were locked up inside the apostles the disciples they got the power they witness from being in the defensive they now gone into the offensive from being locked up inside in their own homes they now go to the enemy's territory into the enemy's camp they went into the temple where the murder of jesus christ were they were bold they were not afraid they did not keep away from there they went there and stood there and preached there in the same place where they tried jesus where they caught jesus where they did all the evil to him they were not afraid and now 
when they were further threatened they came and prayed now the earth shook and they were able to preach with boldness and they were not stopped god's plan for their life was now progressing they did not stop in jerusalem they were not limited in jerusalem they were not contained in jerusalem they went from jerusalem to judea to samaria and we know even apostle thomas came all the way to india even to chennai to carry the gospel and preach it here we need that power to change this nation we need that earth shaking power amen everybody say earth shaking power not just the indwelling or the overshadowing we got to move on to the earth shaking power let us all stand up at this time and pray to god all together first then after that you can come forward and pray let us all open our bibles and go to acts chapter 4 we're going to pray that same prayer that they prayed then after that you can come forward and pray acts chapter 4 start from verse 24 from where it says lord you are god but before we do that remind you once again the way they prayed praying with the church praying aloud praying with unity praying on the word praying for god's plan praying for preaching praying for the power of god Therefore all together Acts chapter 4 verse 24 Lord you are God once again let's all try it Acts chapter 4 verse 24 with all your strength just as how they prayed expecting this place to be shaken with your all strength shout out aloud and say Lord you can do better than that once again say Lord you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them who by the mouth of your servant david have said why do the nations rage and the people plot vain things the kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the lord and against his christ for truly against your holy servant Jesus whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done now lord Look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus Oh shout out his name once again say Jesus Oh Yes oh Lord we call on your holy name Even this morning we come to your house of prayer seeking you seeking your leading and your guidance Oh that you will be done that your kingdom come in all the earth